Friends, I can tell you that um, having sat in a traffic jam on Centenary for 40 minutes, this is the only place between Toowoomba and here that it isn't raining. That's good. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, this magnificent parliament over here is made of stone. It's meant to symbolise the solidity of the rule of law, built on the rock of justice. And what is the cornerstone of law? Well, the Select Committee on Medical Ethics in the UK put it this way. The prohibition of intentional killing is the cornerstone of law and social relationships, end quote. Yes. Yes. We in Queensland face a moment in our history where our government stands poised to shatter the cornerstone of law, which is the prohibition of intentional killing. But does that prohibition extend to the baby in the womb? Well, of course it always has. In our common law, we go back to the 1938 Born ruling by Justice uh, McNaughton. And he said, the law of the land has always held that human life is sacred. And the protection that the law extends to human life extends also to the unborn baby in the womb, he says. The life of the unborn baby in the womb must not be destroyed, says Justice McNaughton, unless it must for the preservation of the still more precious life of the mother, end quote. That has been the law of the land in Queensland to this very day. Of course, Queensland law allows for abortion in those tragic extremely rare cases where it is necessary to save the mother's life. Of course it does. Of course we doctors will be part of that if circumstances force us. But we stand poised on the government of our state being prepared to desecrate the sanctity of human life, strip away the protection of law from those little hidden members of the family over on the dark side of the womb where we cannot see them and therefore the government wants to pretend that they do not exist. That is the moment we face. And you remember that in the Queensland ruling, 1986 by Justice Maguire, he picked up the born ruling and said, this is a humane doctrine for humanitarian purposes it cannot be made the excuse for every inconvenient conception, end quote. That is what Labor proposes, every inconvenient conception, up to 22 weeks. You can have your abortion, no questions asked, no medical reason whatsoever is required. They define that baby up to 22 weeks as nothing zero, less value than you would give to any little mammal, a cat, a dog of the same age, the same size. And I promise you, if you did to that little kitten or puppy, what doctors will be free to do in Queensland under Labor's law to babies in the womb, you would be sent to jail. So remember always the words of Justice Maguire at the end of the Queensland law, common law ruling, which still exists today. The law in this state has not abdicated its responsibility as guardian of the silent innocence of the unborn. So ladies and gentlemen, we are in uncharted waters, never has our democracy, never has the Queensland society moved to destroy the cornerstone of law, moved to overturn the prohibition on intentional killing, moved to annul the sanctity of the life of the baby in the womb. And we have to look back in history to understand societies that have done this sort of 
moral movement. You remember Alexander Solzhenitsyn? He was sent to the Gulag in the Soviet Union by Stalin. And in his monumental documentation of that evil empire, he made this observation. Lying always comes before killing. Lying always comes before killing. We have had a, a horrible example of that in Queensland. Because the Labour government has used every power at its disposal to suppress the truth about the baby in the womb, to suppress the truth about what their bill will allow doctors to do to those babies. The truth, the truth has been suppressed. Let me give you a couple of examples from the submission that I sent on behalf of our doctors group just yet, to the Health Committee of Inquiry into the Termination of Pregnancy Bill 2018. And on the logo of our doctors group, we have this most beautiful drawing by Leonardo da Vinci. Who's heard of him? Is he a rabid alt-right fanatic? Okay, Leonardo da Vinci's beautiful picture of the baby in the womb is on our Letterhead alongside the name of our patron, the Honourable Dr. John Heron, former Queen's Honorary Surgeon, former Minister in the Howard Government. The Labour Government censored that picture of Leonardo. They blacked it out at the top of the page. Then they blacked out a photo I had of my hand holding a little 13-week plastic model of a 13-week baby. And alongside it, I said, this is the model I show to excited parents when they reach 13 weeks. This is the age of our first baby when we saw his little profile on ultrasound where he rubbed his cheek and we recognised his profile then as now. Labour blacked that out. Why? Well, they'd said in their committee conditions that they would not accept images of fetuses. They would not accept images of fetuses or the results of medical procedures. Maybe they were thinking about horrible, ugly pictures. Leonardo da Vinci is not. He is a beautiful image of the baby, the humanity of the baby in the womb. This little model is not ugly. It's a beautiful image that gives joy to parents. Labour censored and blacked out those images because Lying comes before killing. And they had to destroy any suggestion of the humanity of these little brothers and sisters of ours. They had to destroy any powerful message to the health committee, to the MPs, to the public, that might somehow expose the inhumanity of what Labour is proposing to do. But it went far beyond that, the censorship and the blacking out wasn't just about images like they said it would be. They blacked out any words of truth in our submissions, not just mine, in Cherish Life's Australian Family Association, many more. For example, they blacked out the words from the ABC 730 report. That's public domain. It was broadcast on the 27th of October 1994 here in Brisbane. And it had the words, as I mentioned last rally, of Queensland's leading abortion doctor, David Grunman at the time, head of Planned Parenthood in Australia. And he had said on the 7.30 report what his method of choice was for abortions after 20 weeks, which is what this bill is all about. Highly relevant material for the committee. And they blacked it out where he said, his method of choice was, quote, essentially a breach delivery, where the fetus is delivered feet first. And then once the head is brought down into the cervical canal, it is decompressed with a puncturing instrument so that it therefore fits through the birth canal, end quote. I 
think that is relevant to our legislators to know what will happen under their law, what they are giving their blessing to and their funding to under the law they're making on our behalf. But no, they blacked it out. They blacked it out in the Cherished Life submission and elsewhere. More incredibly, the Labor-controlled Health Committee of Inquiry even blacked out the words of their own parliamentary Hansard, where Mike Horan, who was the opposition health spokesman, as I mentioned last time, expressed his dismay about this practice that Dr Grunman had talked about and said, what will it mean, Mr Speaker, for the respectful, for, for the society, sorry, the conscience of society and its respect for law, if they are vividly aware of such brutality and they see their leaders do nothing about it. More importantly, said Mike Horan, what will it mean for all those defenceless babies who, unlike their peers in the hospital nurseries, will never feel a human touch except, and this was all blacked out, except that tight grip to their legs and that stab to their head, end quote. This is what Labor has done. You must suppress the truth about the humanity of the baby. One more extraordinary example. They blacked out words from the legislation of arguably the world's greatest legislative body, the United States Senate, where it spoke of its ban on partial birth abortion, which of course is the technique that Dr. Grunman was describing. And the US Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act opens with the following. Congress finds and declares the following. That a moral, medical and ethical consensus exists. That the practice of performing a partial birth abortion, an abortion in which a physician delivers, and this is all blacked out, delivers an unborn child's body until only the head remains inside the womb punctures the back of the child's skull with a sharp instrument and sucks the brains out before complete delivery of the dead infant, and that's where the blackout ends, is a gruesome and inhumane procedure that is never, never medically necessary and should be prohibited. Our parliamentarians have censored every word of power that would challenge the conscience of good men and women in our parliament. They blacked it out. And as one last defiance of this censorship, of this regime of labor that seeks to dehumanize and deny the humanity of the baby, let me show you what was shown on the floor of the US Senate. The US Senate the exact diagrams to help US senators understand the significance of this proposal, certified by a specialist in obstetrics as correct, if my glamorous assistant. <laughs> the first picture was this, and the words attached in the US Senate said, guided by ultrasound, the abortionist grabs the, doc the baby's legs with forceps. Next picture. The baby's leg is pulled into the birth canal. Next picture. The abortionist delivers the baby's entire body except for the head. Next picture. The abortionist jams scissors into the baby's skull. The scissors are then opened to enlarge the hole. And the last picture shown to the US senators was this. The scissors are removed and a suction catheter is inserted. The child's brains are sucked out. The baby is then evacuated. Sorry, Tisha. That, that was shown on the floor of the US Senate because the censorship was not so great in America as the censorship is in Queensland under Labor. These are horrible images because it is a horrible act which is going to be given its blessing by this horrible bill next week.
if it succeeds. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not know which way it will go. We have hope, we have confidence in the decency of men and women on both sides of this parliament. But if they allow themselves to go into this like blind, wise monkeys who see no evil and hear no evil and speak no evil and they drift towards legislation, then they have failed us, they have failed themselves and they have failed all future babies and the mothers. So, whichever way it goes, even if the worst happens and the law in this state does abdicate its responsibility as guardian of the silent innocence of the unborn. Even if that happens, we are here, we will remain as the guardians of that silent innocence. And we will slowly replace those usurpers Take courage as a final thought from our friends in America who for 42 years have lived under a regime of unrestrained abortion on demand, which is so close to ours, unrestrained to 22 weeks. And then from there, no meaningful restraint. Let me show you one word of truth, one image of truth. This little baby, a model at 20 weeks, a precise model. This is the age at which Dr. Mark Hobart in Victoria was asked to do, arrange an abortion because the parents were having a girl and they didn't want a girl, they, they only wanted a boy. That's what's coming in Queensland. And under the Palaszczuk law, we GPs will be breaking the law if we refuse to collaborate in this baby's killing. And we will refuse. But... This is also the age at which that partial birth abortion technique, which has happened in the past in Queensland until, I suspect, public opinion got too strong. But it is open for this procedure to start happening again in Queensland, partial birth abortion. That is the age. This is almost the age of the baby that I've held a living baby at 22 weeks at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Little baby born terribly early. We, we tried, the specialist tried to save that baby, tried to intubate, intubate her. And it failed. And we told the mother in the adjacent room and she asked a nurse to baptise that little baby. And she did. And we dressed her in those little gowns that the volunteers knit for tiny, tiny premature babies like this. And we laid the little baby on the mother's breast and you could hear these little gasps and then, and then she went still. I put it to you, friends, that is the right way to treat a little baby like this. And Premier Palaszczuk, your way is not the right way. If we lose everything, remember the Vice President of the United States last year at their rally for life. 46 years into their dark times of abortion on demand. And he said, life is winning in America. He said, be assured that we, like you, will never grow weary. We will never rest until we restore a culture of life for us and our posterity. We will never lose hope and we will never forget, we will never forgive this matter until those usurpers who pose as our lawmakers but in fact shatter the foundation of law itself are replaced by men and women of justice who will treat the baby as as a true member of the human family. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Van Gan. That was excellent.